I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and today we're going to be dealing with some really, really, really dark subject matter. So if you have a problem with content warnings, then I suggest that you fuck the fuck off, you whiny little piss baby. Today's subject is the mislabeled Clonmel witch burning of 1895. I say mislabeled because the victim, Bridget Cleary, was not accused of being a witch. She was accused of being a changeling. Now before we get into this, I want to give a little bit of cultural context. Imagine a being with near godly power and near limitless knowledge. Now also imagine that this being is completely devoid of empathy. Not only has no understanding of the difference between right and wrong, but has no capacity to develop an understanding of that concept. And can take any form at will and can make other things and other people take any form at will. You take all of that you put it together with seeming immortality, a tendency towards kidnapping, and ties to the dead that I'll get into in future videos, and you have the fairies of Irish folklore. They were far from the nice, joyful creatures they're often depicted as. They showed a callous disinterest in human suffering at best, and at worst, a gleeful joy in it. Evil isn't quite a severe enough word, because usually in folklore and mythology, the evil characters know they are evil and know what they are doing is wrong and bad. But the Irish fairies didn't have those concepts. They didn't care. Belief in the other crowd, as they were often known, persisted all over Ireland up to the beginning of the 20th century and even still sticks around in some parts of the country today. But along with that belief was a lot of distrust and a lot of fear. Fairies were bad news and not someone you wanted to encounter. While there were plenty of stories of people encountering the other crowd and coming back with amazing gifts and talents, there were even more stories of people coming back traumatized, disfigured, or not at all. Because of this distrust and fear, there was a lot of adults, mostly women, and children, most likely with autism or tuberculosis, who were murdered, either because people believed they were changelings, or that they were trafficking and consorting with fairies themselves. With the context of that social paranoia in mind, let's talk about Bridget Cleary. She lived in Ballyvidley, near Clonmel in County Tipperary. This was a particularly superstitious area. In fact, the nearby mountain of Slieve Manon was rumoured to be home to all sorts of fairies and was definitely home to many uh, Slieveens. Born Bridget Boland, Bridget Cleary was often described as a very independent, opinionated and attractive young woman. She largely provided for herself as a self-employed dressmaker until she married the much older Michael Cleary at the age of 18. Marrying at such a young age was actually quite unusual in Ireland at the period. Most women held off until their mid-twenties before they got married. Michael was nine years her senior at age 27. Eventually Michael and Bridget settled down in a recently built labourer's cottage in an area called Tolocason with Bridget's father Patrick Boland. The cottage was generally distrusted by the local community as it was built on the site of an old ring fort. Ring forts being heavily associated with fairies at the time and even still today. There are many pieces of farmland where you will see mounds covered in trees or just rings of trees associated with ring forts or presumed to be ring forts that no farmer will get rid of or dare to stir. Living with Michael, Bridget began to take less dressmaking work, but she supplemented her income by keeping chickens and selling the eggs. Doing this, she managed to be 100% 
financially independent of her husband. A married woman with so much financial independence didn't sit well with the people of Tullocossan, who thought of it as Bridget putting on airs. This combined with the fact that Bridget's mother was long rumoured to have been taken several times by the fairies and to be in league with them meant that Bridget was generally disliked in the community. One night in early spring, Bridget was coming back from Kylnagrana Hill, another hill that had a bad reputation and was heavily associated with fairies. She had been there trying to collect egg money from Jack Dunn, a well-known Schlieveen in the area. I'm going to take this moment to explain what a Schlieveen is. Schlieveen is one of those words that, where the meaning has changed over time. Nowadays, a Schlieveen would refer to someone who was tricky and deceitful, someone that you couldn't really trust. But in the period, the word Schlieveen referred to a fairy doctor, which was someone who was experienced with folk medicine or herbal medicine who was rumoured to have gotten their knowledge from the fairies. On her way back from Calnagrana Hill, Bridget took a chill, which got worse over the coming days and weeks, which is where the problem started. Actual doctors with actual qualifications were few and far between in rural Ireland at the time. So most of the time if somebody got sick, they would bring in the local Schlieveen to check them out. Eventually, Jack Dunn was summoned to see what was wrong with Bridget. At this point, Bridget's condition had deteriorated a great deal. She could barely leave her bed and was having a lot of difficulty even just walking around the house. Jack Dunn took one look at her and whispered, that is not Bridget Boland. Now, while that could easily be interpreted as him saying that she simply was so sick she wasn't looking herself, her husband, Michael, took it as confirmation of his suspicions. This is not my wife at all. This is not Bridget. It's a fairy creature from Kyle Nagrana. Over the coming days and weeks, Michael became increasingly distant from his wife. After three attempts, he eventually managed to get a real doctor to take a look at her. But Michael wasn't satisfied with his diagnosis and the treatment didn't seem to be doing much for her. Bridget was getting worse. Under the advice of another Slevene named Dennis Ganey, Michael became even more convinced that his wife had been replaced with a changeling and insisted on administering a cure most likely made from foxglove and milk from a cow that had recently given birth. Foxglove was traditionally believed to be a poison against fairies, but in reality, Foxglove is just a poison, full stop. It, it's just poisonous. So if this was the mixture Bridget was given, it would only have made her condition worse. And Michael's conviction that she was a changeling even stronger. On the night that Michael administered the cure, the shutters of the house were drawn, the doors were locked, and screams could be heard coming from inside the house. The neighbours could hear Michael's voice shouting, Take it, you old bitch! Away she go! Away she go! When the neighbours finally got to enter the house, they found Bridget being held down by Jack Dunn and her four brothers. Michael had a spoon in one hand and a pot in the other. The pot contained hot milk with some kind of herbs, most likely foxglove in it. Bridget had burn marks on her face. Michael explained that they had been trying to give her the cure, but she refused to take it. So she had to be held down. Her face was burned with a red hot poker to make her take the cure. And Michael said that the doors had to have been kept shut because the house was full of fairies. With the house now full of townsfolk, Michael demanded of Bridget, are you Bridget Boland? Wife of Michael Cleary, by the name of God. Bridget tried to answer, but the combination of her sickness and the trauma of what had just been done to her left her too weak to say any. Jack Dunn the Slevine instructed Michael, make a good fire and we'll make her answer. The six men held her over the fire for some time, forcing her to assert over and over again that she was in fact the real Bridget Cleary. Eventually, they seemed satisfied 
and laid her back in her bed. But her ordeal was far from over. Several days later, the funeral of Michael's father was held in Tolokasim. Many of their friends and many of Bridget's relatives, many of their friends and many of Bridget's relatives went to the funeral and ended up back at the Cleary's house afterwards. While Bridget was sitting by the fire, Michael suddenly asked her, Are you Bridget Cleary, my wife, in the name of God? He asked this three times, and each time she answered, he made her eat a piece of bread and jam. When on the third time, she didn't answer, Michael leapt out of his chair in a fit of rage and forced the last piece of bread down her throat. Their guests, possibly too struck with fear by Michael's violent actions, did nothing to stop him. Michael then stripped Bridget of her clothes, leaving her only in her chemise, and brandishing a flaming stick from the fire, locked the front door, locking in himself, Bridget, and their guests. At this point, several of their guests disappeared into the bedroom to avoid Michael's rage, leaving Michael and Bridget shouting and fighting in the kitchen. When they emerged, they found Bridget lying dead or unconscious on the ground, her chemise in flames, Michael standing over her, still clutching the flaming stick from the fire. I believe she's dead, he said, before walking to the windowsill and taking the oil lamp so that he could douse her body in the oil. When their guests protested, trying to tell Michael not to burn his wife, he said, she's not my wife. She's an old deceiver sent in place of my wife. When the guests tried to leave, Michael drew a knife and said that the door would not be opened until the real Bridget came back to him. They cowered in the bedroom and Michael shouted at them, You're a dirty set. You'd rather have her with the fairies in Kyle Nagrana than here with me. You may be wondering why this video doesn't have Irish folklore in the title and why it's not part of the Irish folklore playlist. It's because this, unfortunately, is Irish history. This really happened. Much of the information, including the quotes, are from the transcript of Michael's trial. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Of that sentence, he served 15. The year he got out, he boarded a ship for Montreal and then disappeared from public record. The witch trials never really caught on in Ireland. The few genuine witch trials that did happen in Ireland were in cities like Kilkenny, Cork or Dublin, where there was a heavy British presence and were conducted by the British for the most part. However, attacks on suspected changelings were very common. The absence of witch trials among the native Irish wasn't because of any kind of moral superiority. It was because we just had a different name for our scapegoat. It was largely the same targets, usually women or the disabled. It's a problem in our history and it is sadly sadly very indicative of parts of the current political climate there is george hook's recent comments about rape there's the numerous cases in recent years of rapists and committers of sexual assault receiving very lenient sentences and there is the lack of bodily autonomy medically with women and others with wombs not being allowed make important choices about their own bodies when it comes to pregnancy even if many of the superstitions that spurred this kind of behavior in Ireland's past are mostly gone. The attitudes that made women and the disabled the chief victims 
are still very present. I think we need to look at the story of Bridget Cleary and the story of modern women in Ireland, the stories of so many women and others with wombs. We need to look at the similarities and stop patting ourselves on the back for how far we've come and actually try to get to how far we say we've come. That was way darker than I was actually expecting this video to go. That last bit, the end, the social commentary, I, I wasn't planning that. That just kind of popped out there. Okay, um, if you liked this video, or, you know, maybe not liked, but appreciated the message, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know, my usual bit just feels kind of... Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna do it this time. You, you know the stuff. You know the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>